In the spirit of respect, authenticity, and reconciliation, the town of Slave Lake honors and acknowledges that we are situated on the traditional lands of Sarge First Nation within Treaty 8 territory, home to Indigenous, Métis, and Inuit peoples who have occupied these lands since time immemorial. Councillor Adams. Motion to adopt the agenda. Okay, motion on the floor. Any discussion? Call to question those in favor. And that is carried. Okay, reports and new business, playground and park service levels. Calvin. Good evening, Councilor Mayor. Um, the uh, subject is playground and park service levels. Um, this request for decision meets the strategic, strategic objective, recognize the value of our recreation amenities. The purpose of this report will provide council with information on the service levels for parks and playgrounds. The background of it, mowing the service level standards are, are clearly identified in the green space maintenance service contract that the town has entered with our contractor. There are four essentially, there are essentially four service levels. Um, weekly cutting and maintenance on the sports fields also includes fertilization and weed maintenance. This is contracted for the ball diamonds at Charity and Sinclair Parks. The Town of Save Lake Crews will continue to partner with High Prairie School Division to maintain the sports fields used for minor soccer at uh, Royal Michener Secondary School. Okay, the number two uh, high priority areas, uh, cutting done every seven to 10 days. Of course, this is varying on, uh, on the weather. Includes areas like grass along Main Street, Quadrant Parks, etc. Okay, the third area is uh, medium priority areas, cutting every 10 to 20 days. Includes areas like smaller parks with playgrounds such as Maple Crescent and Fournay Parks, area adjacent to trails, entrance signs, reserve lots and spaces, et cetera. Low priority areas, cutting once a month, includes areas like ditches in industrial areas, berms adjacent to Highway 2 and Highway 88, and empty lots in Fournay Place. Fire smart crews have identified areas uh, where they maintain the grass, primarily in roadside ditches. This is done through uh, either prescribed burns or mowing and is considered as a separate service than what was provided by the contractor. Parks and playgrounds, parks are checked between three and five times uh, per week for garbage maintenance and other concerns such as vandalism. This includes four quadrant parks, four pocket parks, ball fields at Sinclair and Charity Parks, including parking lots and uh, spectator areas, and the downtown area, uh, including Citizens Park. The quadrant parks are Shirter Park in the Northeast, Poplar Grove, Park in the Northwest, Barton Park in the Southwest, Hill to Even Park in the Southeast, the Pocket Parks, Maple Crescent Park in the Southeast, Kinsman Park Southeast, Canets Park Southeast, Fournier Park Southwest, and Connor Lucan Memorial Fitness Park in the Northeast. Okay, as crews uh, identify repairs required in playgrounds, they are to be completed by the MRC Parks crew in a timely manner. One of the greatest challenges with playgrounds is sourcing parts for repairs often requiring custom orders as manufacturers regularly change the products. Further, once every two years, the town carries out an external playground inspection, hiring a consultant to provide a report as to the playground in relation to the playground safety and compliance with the um, CSA standard. Any deficiencies noted are handled by town crews to either repair or remove those components from service. The, the last playground audit was carried out in 2022. We're working through some of the deficiencies from the report on a priority basis. In addition to the playground repairs, crews are also to monitor and do the following, removal of grass and debris from all fall, and fall protection surface, a sand or fiber, uh, ensure the distribution of sand and material to maintain fall protection under and adjacent to the playground equipment, especially swings, slides, and climbing structures, keep trees trimmed around park areas, ensure the spray parks at Schroeder Park and Hilde Even are working correctly, ensure the features at the skateboard, skate park, tennis court, and outdoor rinks appear to be safe and maintained, Preventative maintenance is planned and implemented in all park spaces. This can include staining wood parks, equipment, ensuring furniture is in good repair, timely removal of graffiti, monitoring fencing, etc. Trails are monitored for vandalism, general repair, and tree trimming. Garbage cans are emptied as trails are checked. Uh, flowers are prepped and planted. Hanging baskets are a partnership with the Canets Club. Other flower planters are completely the town's responsibility. Once flowers are planted, they are watered and fertilized two to three times per week. Depending on the weather, 
Tree planting plans are established annually, depending on budget considerations and availability of trees. Focus is on filling in gaps in high profile areas, especially areas where trees have been removed. The current focus remains on Main, Main Street and downtown. Tree trimming occurs throughout the year with MRC Parks crew carrying out small trimming and pruning as needed and identified. More complex trimming and pruning and large tree removal is contracted certified arborists. Most arborists work typically occurs in the fall due to legislative requirements. For example, elm trees cannot be trimmed until fall and winter months. Moving on to capital projects. Uh, capital projects are identified through the capital plan. In 2023, the projects include Hild Even Park will see the completion of the spray park, which includes benches, washrooms, gazebo for shade cover, picnic tables, and a bike rack. A lot of that's already been completed. Uh, an expansion to the existing playground area with new equipment and a mulch base. There will be two new basketball hoops and poles on the existing asphalt court. We're working on finalizing a date to have the tennis court resurfaced and new lines painted on one of the courts. This will create a hybrid pickleball tennis ball tennis court. The net will be adjustable to accommodate the specific style of play. The contract for this project has not been able to secure a date and or alternative options are limited as this is a specified field. The bike ramp will see a, a bike track extension built to incorporate this asset in a more purposeful manner. Barton Park will see a new 54 by 54 pump track with additional picnic tables and benches for seating. Poplar Grove will see a new concrete half basketball court with one basketball hoop and post. Schroeder Park will see a new gazebo for shade cover that will that will be installed. This project was funded by the donate by a donation uh, from the Rotary Club. It will include a concrete pad under the gazebo, picnic tables under the gazebo, and will repurpose some of our existing inventory of benches around the gazebo. Um, discussion, any uh, resident complaints about grass mowing should be reported to myself, Parks and Facilities Manager, who will then coordinate with the contractor to have concerns resolved. All other complaints can be handled by town crews ourselves. Okay. Um, relation to strategic planning, mission statement or vision statement, it helps enhance our exceptional quality of life. Um, recommended to council, administration uh, recommends the council accept this report for information. Questions. Questions. Councilor Adams. Uh, move that council accepts the playground and park service levels report as information. Jeff. Sorry, I didn't know you're going right to motion. Um, just one thought or one commentary in regards to this report. So, <clears throat> similar to winter time, topic of complaints are typically relating in regards to snow removal and how often that's happening or not happening. Summertime, if it's not potholes, which we've actually taken a pretty good, we actually hit that pretty hard this year, and I haven't heard very much about that. The next popular complaint is, is, is grass cutting, right? So this is an opportunity, although it would be difficult, there, we could make changes throughout the season. I mean, typically we're reviewing, if in a perfect world, we're reviewing service levels prior to that kind of high point of season. So ideally, this would have been a good report for us to maybe look at in April or March ish kind of thing, but we still have an ability to make a correction should council support that. But the long cutting would probably be the next sort of, or the the, the frequency rather of long cutting tends to be um, an area of concern that we receive as you know as as uh, the town employees. So this would be an opportunity for council to to look at that, to discuss that, to see if you have any change because you have an idea, uh, you know, in terms of our guidelines that are set in our and our contract is is built around the guidelines that council establishes as it relates to high priority areas and how often they're being cut. Um, if you think about your own lawn, I mean, even a high priority seven to 10 days starts to get a little bit long and mismanaged. If you start to look at some of those other higher priority areas or those medium priority areas, now you're looking at two or three weeks almost, right? So if council has, a, has an interest to talk about that or to increase that now would be the time to discuss we could potentially implement it this year or bring it forward with a with a motion to council to bring it back with a, an increase for budget deliberations for future years but i just thought i'd bring it up for discussion as it's a topic of frequent text messages and calls <laughs> Council Gramlich? so is that uh you know no matter how many times we say cut the grass every day if we're contracting it out does that not mean our contractor has to be held accountable like are they missing some of the, the scheduled cuts and that's why it might be too deep or, or too long excuse me so the last few weeks i've been working with the contractor to establish like a schedule throughout yeah. the week every monday morning i text them hey you got your schedule 
And um, luckily last week was okay. This week with the rain, it's probably going to be um, a little bit wonky, but we're trying to stick to the schedule that he's provided. Um, one of the things that we're having an issue with is he'll cut. And then two days later, the dandelions, it looks like the grass isn't cut, but the dandelions are taken over and it's, it's hard to, I mean, you could cut them every second day, the dandelions, right? So is the, is the money we budgeted for this year good enough? If, if the contractors could keep up is, is what we have now working for you, Kelvin, or do you, or do you well, think, I think, I think the one rec, but well, one thought was, you know, maybe we can do some type of spraying or something on the, the dandelions, right? To try and, I mean, the dandelions look terrible. They're everywhere, but I mean, the only way to get rid of them is to spray. I think the cutting of the grass is probably okay, but um, this looks bad because they pop up when they're high. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thing. That's my thought, but I mean, that's. But both of those would be like we don't have a weed spraying program per no. se or a budget allocated to that, right? So that would be a fairly significant sort of line item potentially, especially if we're applying once or twice. Typically, you're applying twice a year. Um, Julie, you have a better memory than me. Why did we take that? We had that at one point when I was on council and I, it went away and I don't remember why. I don't remember if it got lost when we went to the contractor or what. Actually, I don't remember. Okay. You can ask your question next year. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm actually glad that you brought all of this up, Jeff, um, because I did see it on Facebook the other day that they were complaining. Somebody was complaining. I forget the, the location, but um, so wondering, is any of this report going on? any of our um, platforms for communication because sometimes even just letting people know that you know if that's a lower priority then you know that's that's why it's not being done right away mm -hmm. yeah so, so we could totally i don't think it's it's not on there now but it wouldn't be hard for us to do up an information sort of page as it relates to our current service levels and kind of the policy that we uh, that the administration operates underneath right um but if you wanted to make a change to that, I mean, that we would, or if you wanted to engage, I guess we could do a variety of things as it relates to that, but we can definitely explain what our, you know, just like Calvin had outlaid in the report here, um, whether or not people accept that or think that's the right time frame or not, if 10 to 20 days is too much to be cutting, you know, or not cutting a, a you know, particular park or section of the city or the town, um, I guess that's up. We could cut as often as you want. You just need a budget to approve it. Ferguson. So what determines if we cut, whether we cut at day 10 or day 20, is it height based or is it aesthetics or what determines that exactly? A lot of it is the timing. So if they go through their high priority stuff and then it rains for a couple of days and they don't get it till their 10th day, then it pushes back the, the, the medium priority stuff. Right. Gotcha. So it all compounds to stretching the medium priority to 15, 20 days rather than 10 or 15 days. So, right? it's, not, so it's not necessarily height based. It's you have this window to do it within. So whether the grass is four or six inches or whatnot. It's... Well, there is a, um, I believe in the, our sports field one we had it. I think it's. That's what I thought. But yeah. Fields. I don't but, have it with but we, me here. But we don't have that for our like main street and our other areas right. or is it just the sports fields? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the, so it's kind of the minimum maximum uh, yeah. limitations for the sports fields is all that was set in place. Yeah. So to kind of put it in perspective, the the spraying for the sports field Sinclair side, um, that whole area to spray once is uh, between sixteen and seventeen hundred dollars each time, right? So, um, just, so I, I for one would be interested in like the the weed spraying costs for some of the areas with dandelion. So is that uh, is that something that we can request to come back just with a just as it can either come back for me. I don't, I don't care if it comes back this summer or with budget, but I think it, if it was on once and then was dropped, I'd just like mm -hmm. to know what that service level cost would potentially look like. If, if you think that would be the biggest improvement to our, if, if frequency of grass cutting, isn't the biggest improvement to our aesthetics of the town. And you think that weed spraying, I would just like to know what the cost associated with that is. Yeah. Councilor um, yeah, I would agree with you there. I'd be interested to know what spraying at least just like main street and like some of the, you know, high visibility areas in that sense. Um, you know, I think there could be some value there. Um, I do have a question about um, just all the park upgrades. So everything is set to be complete by end of summer, roughly, except for possibly this pickleball tennis court. Yeah, and Thanks. even that, um, they were saying late June. Okay. Um, they had one of their installers that got in an accident and they couldn't give us a date until he recovered. Okay. So they, of course, this is their busy season, so everything's piling up on them, but they haven't finalized the dates. We're hoping weekly, Kush and I have been on them trying to 
Okay. Nailed them down because I understand it was supposed to happen last year. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's why I was curious on that. So, but everything else, because it's every yeah. every quadrant park essentially is getting upgrades, which is amazing. Yeah. So we are slated yeah. to have most of them completed on time. Yeah, okay. yeah. The uh, basketball court, I think, um, by the end of next week should be completed. Oh, awesome. Um, the playground equipment, I believe, the update was uh, July twentieth. The okay. pump track was. Um, I think they just come back with another date mid-August for it. So okay. I do have a question, and this might be more, I guess, future plans for Hilda Even Park as well. Um, but there was some commentary brought up a little while ago just about accessibility for kids within our parks. What are our plans for Hilda Even in terms of like, are we actually putting in a sidewalk or something like that for you, like strollers, wheelchair accessibility? I was just curious on that. Yeah, so, so there is a uh, 2024 plan for the for the trails okay to go through there to join the, the right uh the walking paths okay. and we've actually got a contractor i think he's supposed to give us a price here mid this week mm -hmm. on from the entrance of the corner of hilda even to have a walkway just to go up the uh towards the washroom okay so just like uh um two wide sidewalk blocks just to improve accessibility okay and are is any of the playground equipment in hilda even park specific for like wheelchair accessible children. Like I think we have the um, swings at Schurter, right? That were yeah. kind of, I think, funded by a local group actually. But I was just yeah. curious if there was any particular items or anything going into that park. There is one accessibility, accessibility swing. Okay. And we have uh, incorporated some accessibility uh, picnic tables as well. So, okay. And the mulch that goes on there is um, accessibility friendly. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Councillor Adams and then Councillor Wallen. <laughs> Uh, just dropping back over to the herbicide thing, if I remember correctly, I thought that was uh, kicked out be or changed over because of environmental impact. I thought it's what happened way back when. But, it's possible. Uh, that'd be the one thing I'd be concerned about is just how much we're talking we're spraying. If we've got government that's concerned about our splash park draining into the river without proper controls, what's the impact with uh, herbicides and how does that we do, and, and do we, we don't even have bylaw in place right now that uh, would either restrict or help us do a pesticide control. And, and well, Calvin did mention we do spray in the yeah. some of the sports fields. It yeah. has to be, I, well, maybe there isn't rules for elsewhere, but I'd be I don't know we're, to know. we're not too far from, I don't know, like the regulations of it, but we're within proximity so of highways and cost. creeks there. I don't know. Like, right. Like, well, we're talking in the entire town, not mm -hmm. like, yeah, I can research that and get some numbers. I think that yeah. would be good to add to it um, because there obviously was a reason why we dropped it off. But since none of us potentially recall, maybe then I think that would be good to add to that. Maybe that's why I don't remember. Maybe it wasn't council that took it out of the budget. Might have been the province. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, uh, looking at this report, I I feel like we're very blessed in Slave Lake to have all these parks. You go to any other community and they have kind of like the one big park in the community they uh, i think we're even lucky to kind of have quadrant parks to say this section of town you got yours you got yours these are kind of the four main parks but i mean with you know uh as much attention as we're putting into hilda eben and shorter um should we be looking at maybe um removing maybe some of these smaller parks as they're probably not being used as much as they once were that's something to consider. Yeah, I mean, we maintain them normally, but I mm -hmm. think it'd be hard. To, but it costs us money all, all, ultimately to to maintain some of these parks that may not be getting used now because we got a big spray park, or we got better seating, or we got you know safer equipment. But it may be something maybe that we look at is maybe auctioning some of these pieces in the future. Uh, Councillor Hughes and Councillor Ferguson. Um, I do recall about a year or two ago, I believe there was talk of one of the parks in the Southeast, because it's just right behind my home, that they were going to close. And there was a lot of backlash from the people in that area. They did not want that park closed. Um, so for me personally, I don't think that's something I would really want to see, especially if they're not costing us a lot of money. If they're already there and they're being properly maintained and kids are enjoying them, I would kind of prefer to leave that alone and, and leave them as is, but just kind of weighing in, that's my... Two cents. Ferguson. No, I was just going to say the same comments that Councillor Hughes made. So, so. Councillor Gramic. 
for more clarification, it was time for an upgrade in that park and it was going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the people in that little community there raised enough all around that park to keep it just barely alive. But uh, it, it has been talked about, but they're, they're hanging it on my life support with what they did there. So yeah. anyway. No, I'm just saying that we're, we are blessed. And when you see all of these parks, like I said, other communities probably don't have as many. Uh, they all kind of require our attention, I think. But um, maybe something that we can kind of maybe take a look at. I don't know if there's a way of measuring it is to make sure that all these parks are getting, you know, some sort of usage. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I but I think there's a different approach to take for that. I think when um, administration comes first, I, I would like to see that if if the, the cost benefits of a park come back to us with, hey, it needs major upgrade, it needs major maintenance, then we take a look at from an administration perspective, if that is mm -hmm. um, the best use of funds at that time. Um, currently, if they're not costing us a significant amount of, of funds to maintain, I, I personally would be in favor of more amenities that are spread throughout town. I think we get into um, a bit of a challenge when we have our parks only located in 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 two quadrants so i would like to i personally would like to see it spread evenly um just so that we get access everywhere yeah. but and again, I'm, not, cost I'm not saying anything about removing any parks i just want to see kind of maybe ensure that we're using them all and as we're making some better are some being not used now so um i had another question though um and it, i think this has uh, gar garnered some uh, comments and discussion on Social media is Tamarack, the, the new Tamarack Spray Park is absolutely fantastic. Um, I see that we're closing at 8 p.m. Some people still in the community are unsure of the hours or are wondering if, you know, are those going to get extended, you know, later in the summer when the kids are out of school? Um, so is that something that we're looking at or is it just 8, 8 p.m. is when we're so that cutting was, it down? That was what the uh, hours were set, like when it was before I was even here. I didn't, I don't know who come up with the hours, but um we do have the capability uh we're putting a sim card in to possibly extend them like if we need to keep it on for longer right now it shuts off electronically at eight o'clock um then we would have to extend our security hours everything right so there's a couple different things that would complicate that a little bit but something. i believe it came into play with the washrooms as well that the washrooms yeah. need to be closed at night and um, with regards to staff availability and overtime and a few other things that that's why they had also decided. I think also the noise hours they had looked at too, wanting to end well ahead of time. But that's what I believe why they initially set that that schedule. Yeah. I mean, it's always, again, any service that we provide is always a matter of, of establishing the level and, and assuring there's appropriate budget for it, right? This year is a bit of a stretch for us because it's a new concept in terms of these public washrooms and, and the investment that we've made in this because there is a staffing component. There is a contractor component to it. Um, I would caution that we're already, rel we're fairly stretched already as it relates to that sort of initiative and project and stretching it even further might, might, um, cause the whole the whole house of cards to tumble there so i would just be cautious that it might be okay for us to check it out and see how it works this year and come back with because there was discussions uh even at budget time about if the washrooms and this sort of process worked uh that maybe adding them in other locations as well but with that comes um increased contractor costs and logistical issues right so just uh, oh, sorry go ahead um clarity on one the one concern that was bounced around on social media as well with the flower pots and stuff is we pre-fill them they have a reservoir in them so we pre-fill them plant the flowers um, we did that on the thursday or the friday by monday they were they were dry again we had to refill them again so it's a it's an ongoing thing even if people see people out there watering it's if it's raining it's because they're filling the reservoirs it's not because it's raining and we think they don't need it or they need twice as much so thank you for that. <laughs> The look on Joe's face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, appreciate that. And and I know um, we had reached out through CAO to operations and, and parks to, to figure out why, because again, it might look a little silly that you're yeah. filling an empty, an empty water, but there's usually a reason mm -hmm. for said things Not and a very killing, rational yeah. reason. So <laughs> yeah. I appreciate, appreciate you bringing that up. Councillor Wallen. I think, uh, yeah, I just want to give you guys a, a pat on the back. I think the town looked really great uh i think i think 
you know, the the grass looks fantastic. I think the contractors seem to be doing a good job. I was pretty impressed when the election signs were out and they were actually whippersnipping around uh, around the signs. Um, no, I thought that was fantastic. And it seems like, you know, everything seems to be done before the weekend. So even if we do have visitors coming into town for ball tournaments or for whatever, the town looks uh, at its best on Fridays before the workday ends. So, yeah, Appreciate good job that. to you guys. So the the intended schedule has on Thursdays to cut the main street and high priority areas, as long as weather permits, of course, right? So then it possibly leaves us Friday if Thursday goes sideways. So that's kind of the intent. But Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll call to question those in favor. And that is carried. Thank so you. can I make a recommendation if you're requesting a report or information to come back that you make a separate motion? Yes. Okay, uh, I believe I will word that. I, I will make the motion that there is a report to come back um, during budget time regarding um, the Spring. budget implications of weed spraying as well as an environmental component for that. Because I believe Steve might be right here on that. There are some regulations that we need to be aware of. And you want that for budget time or do you want that sooner? Budget, budget, budget. is okay. fine. I think our service level this year is good and we can assess it then. Did we want to explore the option of increased mowing in the higher visibility areas as well? Or was it just the weed spraying? For, for me, it's just the weed spraying because yeah. I think they said that's the biggest opportunity. Um, but I think it'll make a huge improvement for sure. Yeah. Okay. I just wondered if there was benefit in getting both numbers, like just so we know. But if we can add, well, we do get we can add numbers, the right? When it comes to sailing this many times a week is this much we, we okay yeah as long as we have that info i think that helps them okay well, it's going to be different each year depending on rain schedules yeah. anyway so the schedules are only guidelines really yeah so the motion on the floor is to bring back at budget time the cost of weed spreading as well as any provincial or environmental regulations with regards to that that might hinder that um any further discussion call to question those in favor and that is carried thank you thanks calvin, thanks, calvin. Okay. Yep, yep. Next. Next on the list is the on-call program review and recommendations. So the purpose of this report is to provide council with an overview of the on-call program currently in place with the town and provide recommendations for changes to enhance and support our employees providing this service. So as a function of the CAO's strategic review of various administrative programs and policies, the on-call program was identified as a program requiring examination and external research to ensure the goals of the program were being met for all departments impacted. So currently, Town of Slave Lake employees in specific departments are required to perform on-call duties on a scheduled basis. These duties are a requirement of the specific department and require an employee to be within a certain response time from the work location and be able to respond, i.e. free from any recent alcohol or drug consumption. Uh, departments currently required to perform these duties are the fire department, which includes paid staff and volunteers, facilities department, utilities, operations, and peace officers. Current rates of compensation relating to on-call duties per department are as follows. So the fire department uh, rates are listed before you. The peace officer operations, utilities, and facilities also all share the same rate. So there's a little discrepancy between the two. Uh, issues identified. So administration's review of the duties associated to each department identified a discrepancy between utilities and the remainder of the town's departments, excluding fire. As a regular basis during a night of on-call, utilities employee would typically be required to remotely log in to the water and waste treatment facilities to monitor progress on the various operations. These are also required to often take phone calls relating to alarms for these systems at all hours of the night. In contrast, the remainder of the town departments on call will only be required to answer a phone call for service on a regular on an irregular basis. So the issue being a rate of compensation for utilities does not reflect the additional responsibilities in comparison to the other Town of Slave Lake employees performing on-call duties. Uh, next issue, taxable benefit for vehicles. So the second issue identified relates to CRA's requirement for the town to report mileage for employees who, as a function of their on-call duties, are required to take a Town of Slave Lake vehicle home in order to be able to respond for service. CRA requires this mileage for travel to and from the workplace to their personal residence be added to the employee's year end T4 as a taxable benefit. This requirement applies to all employees who take the Town of Slave Lake vehicles home, including volunteer firefighters who are required to be the duty officer for evenings and weekends under our current fire program. 
Historically, the fire department has seen a decline in the number of volunteers who are active and committed to the fire program. Council has recently approved a tax incentive program in an effort to address these trends. Although the amount of impact each firefighter may be different based on their annual income, the premise of taxing our volunteers who provide a service to the community at a nominal rate hinders our progress. Lastly, market comparison. So the HR department as a function of this review conducted research with other similar size organizations and municipalities. Although there are a wide range of methods this program was being delivered, it was determined that on average, the town of Slave Lake was approximately $10 a day less than the market rates. So you have options before you for council. Option one is to authorize administration to proceed with the following changes uh, as presented to you. It's anticipated that the impact will of this change will result in approximately a $7,000 annual increase to uh, costs relating to the on-call program. For 2023, this net impact will be approximately 3,500 and can be absorbed through the current budget allocations. For the 2024 budget, this amount would be amended and added accordingly. Or option two, to authorize no changes to the on-call program. Uh, human resources will update the associated policy and communicate the changes to all impacted employees should it be supported and the recommendation of administrations to proceed with option one. Councilor Moalem. Uh, I'll make a motion to move that council authorizes administration to proceed with changes to the Town of Slave Lake on call program as presented by administration effective immediately. Adams, uh, I got a few, yeah. well, a question and then a statement, but uh, as far as the question goes, uh, with these on-call rates, that's just to be available, correct? If they, like you're comparing the utilities operators, if they got to go out on a call, they have to deal with the loans, any, they're yeah. getting paid. I mean, any, any employee that is required to leave their, like, right, basically gets in there, puts jeans on and gets in their truck and goes into work is called, is, is paid at a call out rate. So it's outside of this program. So that applies to anyone. So the I problem though is the utilities guys though are doing a lot of this work from home without leaving the home. So the requirement of them, they're actually doing a number of things, uh, including like logging into the system remotely from their laptop at their kitchen table um, and being compensated the same as maybe our, or as our public works operator who's on call if the roads get icy at night uh, and you know anticipate really has no other phone calls that ever happen during the you know it's a, in a regular sort of frequency so there's a discrepancy between what we're paying and what the expectation is on, on a certain group of employees compared to the remainder of them um, as it relates to what's happening during that night at home they're actually working at home but they're not charging a call out rate for that they're just it's falling under the $35 an hour, whatever the case may be. 35 an hour or 35? A night, a, a night. day. Yeah, okay. It's not an hour, no. So it's, there's an there's a, there's a lack of fairness there between the two requirements. Okay, then the other, uh, the statement I wanted to make uh, on this is, I'm, I'm, this is gonna sound not good, but I'm tired of, uh, stuff coming to council in the middle of a budget year to add more money to budget that we've already approved. I like I don't mind seeing this coming before budget and for the 2024 when we're doing the presentation, but this is what about the fourth, fifth one we've had so far this year and we approved budget in months ago, just a few months. So I, I have I struggle with the idea of at, keep adding to our existing budget when we haven't allocated proper funds to this and I understand we will have a typically have a surplus at the end of the year, but then we can deal with it then. That's just my comment. Councillor Gromlick and then Councillor. Okay, so are we doing this to keep up with like the market as we're ten dollars a day less, or is it more to keep up with different departments feel like they're they're not paid to what the other departments paid because they're able to do their job from home? Like what? It's to remedy all of those issues that are identified in the report. There. Okay. So there's. There's the um, there's the issue of discrepancy between departments. There's the issue that we're underneath market, and there's the issue as it relates to our volunteer firefighters. Um, so this adjustment or change to them assist, essentially allows us to help compensate for the taxable benefit that we're forcing them to take fire truck home to be on call for us. And are we is this a is this a hindrance on hiring employees, or is this a complaint internally with employees where they're like, hey, I didn't know I signed up for this, and I don't like this call out fee now, or is it just something that had been identified to catch up on things? Yeah, it was just one of the one of the different pieces. I mean, we were looking over the last course of the year, we've been looking at different elements of compensation. Um, some changes have been made, some haven't been made or haven't been supported. This was one area that was identified 
that we wanted to address later on and we're just happen to get to it now. So um, it's currently not, no one's saying like, I'm not going on call because I don't like my pay rate. We're not at that point yet. No, no one's refused necessarily on call, but a lot of our town services are dependent on employees yep. being on call. So if we ever got to that stage where an employee says, yeah, you know what, this just isn't for me, um, it would cause us some significant operational problems as it relates to our volunteer fire department, uh, the ability for anybody who wants to, any of our operators, and we're not talking a huge, this isn't a huge cost year over year, um, for the want to be on call over the weekend, if the road road conditions deteriorate, our facilities guys are on call for our systems uh, that operate our buildings, but also, um, but also the alarm systems that are here. Someone has to answer that phone and come and check and see if there's someone that drove their car through the front door of the MRC. Um, or we just don't have it and you know potentially an alarm goes on the rink plant and all of a sudden we lose the ice when we run night right so there's Happened. there's a there's a, an importance to this program and making sure that it's it's accurate and it's up to date and it's modernized is important right to maintain those services that we spend a lot of money on um so i'll comment one more and then i'll uh let kim go but it's more to more to steve's point than it this isn't do or die yesterday but this is something we should implement now or in the near future yeah correct and like i had said i think we have enough uh i'm not asking for a budget adjustment or allocation for 2023 so i'm not asking for the you know a reserve allocation for this and your 2024 budget still has the opportunity to to be revisited and to be refined um okay. are, are you saying that the, the 3500 dollars we have room for that under the current correct it's thirty five hundred dollars for the remainder of the year. That's so the estimate. That's right. Yeah. So I'm not asking for a budget allocation. For that, that you have enough within current budget um, in the uh, wage grid to accommodate this. Correct. Okay. Councilor Hughes. Uh, Councilor Grumlick asked a couple of the questions I was going to ask oh, anyways, yeah, but point. I would say I feel like that's a bit of an unfair statement towards administration, though, in terms of budget, because you guys can't possibly know every little thing that's going to happen, especially when council is tasking you with a job like reviewing, you know, the wage grid and all those things that we have asked you to do. So I just wanted to say that I think things like this are always going to happen, just like with any business and any municipality, there's always going to be this unknown stuff. But I do also agree with the point that it's good to stick to our budget. So I'm happy to hear that we already have this $3,500 and I'm in favor of this. Councillor uh, Councilor Hughes also I guess, covered my points there um, with regards to the $3,500 with the room and the current. Um, I think we should definitely add the $7,000 for review um next year but again with any budget and fluctuating inflation rates sometimes our guesses have resulted in surpluses so i think there is a bit of room here uh, we do have a motion on the floor is there any further discussion as i see none call to question those in favor all those opposed and that is carried okay uh, next item up for discussions, the CA report, a CAO report. Sorry, you should have it before you. Uh, like previous sessions, I'll just kind of hit some of the highlights and uh, be open for questions as we continue. So under the communications department, um, engagementslavelake.ca subscribers still about 265. So it's up about eight from the previous report. Uh, new engagement projects, which I believe are have been either released today or will be released very sh shortly. There's a project on becoming a bear smart community. Economic priorities moving forward in a business gap analysis, uh, which relates to one of the requests or one of the motions, I believe it was Councilor Hughes, oh, Councilor Hughes had put forward. Uh, and there's also a couple of new information projects that will be released in regards to FireSmart. And um, I don't think we've released it because we haven't implemented the change yet, but in regards to the swimming wristband program that has been previously before Council. Current Voint subscribers up at around 2,345. So that's up 1,800 from our previous month. Um, and an update on our digital signs replacement, which is a capital project approved for this year, are expected to be received and hopefully installed by the end of this month. So that will be a new digital sign at the intersection just by 7-Eleven here, as well as the one by uh, McDonald's. Under the economic development program, our rural renewal stream update. So we have a total of 11 employers who have been approved to participate in the program. And a total of 12 letters of endorsement have been issued to candidates, seven are newcomers, five are existing residents looking to obtain their permanent residency. 
The Northern and Regional Economic Development Grant application has been accepted by the province, so we've initiated the project with the consultants. Uh, work is expected to begin at the end of June, anticipated to be completed by the end of September. So this is the industrial uh, project or review that we had uh, spoken about or council had authorized. Economic Development Week uh, is this week, as we had postponed from May, so June 12th to uh, 16th. So we have targeted communications being presented and approved uh, on our social media streams currently. And our tourism marketing campaign, so the campaign concept's been finalized and will be released in June. They'll be running two campaigns simultaneously in June to compare performance. So there's the Heck yeah campaign of 2022 and a new campaign uh, titled Nothing Lesser About It. So the run will be running better performing campaigns in July and August, whatever one seems to take more traction or gather more traction. So stay tuned. It's a bit of a race. Um, under recruitment, under HR, currently still uh, posted and accepting applications for aquatic supervisor or manager of IT and junior lifeguards and aquatic instructors. Uh, positions recently filled, so Summer Splash Counselors, uh, Director of Corporate Services, Senior Lifeguard Aquatic Instructors, Detachment Clerks for the RCMP, and our Communications Coordinator. Uh, we'll be starting here June 19th, next week. In progress, we have our Summer Splash, some more Summer Splash Coordinators, a Fire uh, Admin Staff, Deputy Fire Chief, and an Administrative Assistant to the CAO and HR. Under Information Technology, our ERP uh, RFP had two applications, so the next step and we're meeting tomorrow actually is to review those applications and proceed with a recommendation to council, so that should be coming back next week for contract awarding, hopefully. Working with a consultant to have our cybersecurity policy programs and instant response in place, so that's our stratagem capital project that was approved by council, and that's still undergoing, so we hope to have that done by the end of this month here. And exploring options to have IT ticketing system that tracks our IT issues and requests and resolutions and helps provide data-driven decisions through make analytics. Under our finance department, there have been eight new business licenses uh, issued this year or this month. Uh, I won't necessarily go through all of them there. The tax deadline for the 2023 year is a pro fast approaching. The deadline is Friday, June the 30th, 2023. So tax department has been busy answering calls for information, updating tax certificates and working with Alberta land titles, finalizing the information package to send off for the evacuations that happened in May. Uh, so that's all the financial information and waiting for six invoices for vendors for that event. And these costs will be submitted for processing. Under operations, uh, Public Works is continuing to grab, uh, grade gravel roads. They're cleaning catch basins right now. And line painting will, as you see in a recent social media post, was post or was uh, delayed due to some equipment failures. Both uh, the town equipment and our actually contractor equipment failed at the same time. So we had no line painting equipment in town whatsoever. Uh, I believe one of those machines is back here shortly. So when it starts to dry up, you should hopefully see that back out and resuming operations. Under our project department, uh, concrete program is progressing. So repairs in the Northeast and Northwest are complete. Contractors now working in the Southwest and Southeast. Asphalt patching program will be starting this the week of June 12th. Utility tie-ins for the slip storage shed is complete. So the work for the concrete pad is expected to start uh, next week. Third Street road rehab projects progressing. The rain slowed down the concrete crew by one week, pushing the downtown, which in turn is the same contractor who's doing our downtown revitalization. So it's a bit of a uh, domino effect there. Uh, coordinating support for the Rotary Club for the installation of the gazebo in Schurter Park. Concrete pad work is expected to start next week. Working with a consultant to create a revised downtown art feature drawing for further engagement. So that'll come back to council and hopefully uh, an opportunity for some community engagement in terms of that. Pump track equipment has been ordered, expected installation by mid-July. Uh, and I believe Calvin had kind of spoken to about a few of these other projects, so I won't hit them again. Uh, concrete pad has been char uh, for the EV charger was poured on the 6th of June, so the charger hardware is expected to be installed next week. Finalizing the design for the 8th Street Northwest Industrial Water Line Replacement Project and the Water Treatment Plant to E-Lift Force Main Project. And they're working with a consultant to finalize the WTP Administration Space Conceptual Plan. So that would be the office. Under the Planning Department, they're going to be uh, actually bringing back a report, but going to be engaging a consultant to, to help uh, with public consultations and regulations for short-term rentals. So uh, planning, I think, is bringing a report to council for consideration as it relates to that uh, next week. 
working with community service department on a new joint planning use agreements with High Prairie School Division and Living Water School Division. Fire department total calls to date for 2023 is 274, uh, 81 of those coming in the month of May. Uh, in May, uh, Lester Slave River Fire Service and Search and Rescue became very involved in dealing with the wildfires and evacuation centers in the province. They assisted with firefighting resources in Fox Lake, Drayton Valley, Rainbow Lake, Whitefish, High Prairie, and East Prairie. Locally crews from Whitewater, Slave Lake, Smith, Flatbush, Onaway, and Spruce Grove, Thor, Child, Minburn spent six days at Old Smith Highway Fire, working around the clock with structure protection and firefighting. Old Smith residents were evacuated for five days and were able to return with no homes or outside buildings lost or damaged due to the fire. No injuries were reported, some equipment repairs and lots of cleanup was taking place afterwards. Search and Rescue assisted in Slave Lake with setting up the evacuation center, dealing with registrations, going door to door on the Old Smith Highway and Smith community to give info regarding the evacuations. One incident was reported and dealt with. Previous to May 2023, the busiest months on record for the fire service was September 2022. 81 calls in one month with a number of calls being of longer duration certainly can wear out our membership. Many of them took time off from their regular jobs to assist with the fires and some of the Smith firefighters were evacuated and still helping with fight the fires. Our regional system once again proved successful as we are dealing with many other types of calls and they all were handled in a timely fashion. Uh, under community services, our aquatics department's hosting a splash into summer event on June 30th. Uh, both Bronze Medallion and Bronze Cross are being scheduled for July. Under facilities and parks, the Kinet flower baskets have been hung and the watering schedule has commenced. The town flower beds have been planted. Park cleanup is well underway, as well as playground inspections and soccer lines are complete and soccer is underway. Under FCSS, their planning is underway for the family bike rally held in partnership with Alberta Health Services, Health Promotions Department. Under Rec and Programming, Summer Splash registration opened in May 17th. They're off to a good start with registration of average of 19 children registered each day. Uh, so far of our maximum 40. The Visitor Information Center is open for the summer. Staff have are coordinating the gift shop for the season, for this season. And staff at the VIC have been distributing uh, the region's promotional material and are looking at planning a mini event for summer. So more details to come. They've already had a number of visitors who have come to the VIC, including people from California and New Brunswick. A large number of people are stopping in Slave Lake before heading up north to the Northwest Territories in the Yukon. Plans are underway for Canada Day promotions to be coming out shortly, and they'll be joining the participation Community Better Challenge and Parks and Recreation Month during June, and they'll have some information, which I think is already out on social media concerning that. That is my report. Um, in regards to the tourism campaign, is that something we're running internally? Uh, so it's it's run by a uh, local marketer, Truly Creative Marketing, and we're targeting the Edmonton market mostly. So our data suggested that the vast majority of our visits come from Edmonton, uh, over about 70, 70%, and then 20% from the rest of the province. So we're really focusing our efforts on the Edmonton and bedroom communities. It'll be a targeted Facebook and Google campaign, and we're expected to start. We were going to start today, but the marketer ran into some problems, so we're going to start tomorrow. Good. I'm glad to hear that we were able to engage somebody local as well. So thank you. Right. Kind of got in front of you there. <laughs> um, I get one of my questions is actually in regards to Canada Day. Uh, in the past, and I know I brought this up last year, I think, but in the past, and we have the forms for them, we put Canada flags on the either side of sidewalks and we had it all the way downtown. It was, I thought, quite nice. Why did we stop that? Why are we not continuing with this? Can we continue with this? Were those just on the barriers or were those nope. actually on the sidewalk? On the sidewalk, on the road, oh, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they did, did them on the crosswalks the one year, yeah. or one or two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One year. The 150? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. We still have the forms. We still have the paint. So I was just wondering. I have no idea, but I can find out. I don't think we did that last year, at least when I was oh, new into not. the chair. So anything that happened prior to that, I'd have to find out for you. Oh, it would be it would be a minor budgetary item, right? With the paint and staffing to do it, like so. I, I think mostly probably come down to staffing and then maybe not having time with that. So that would probably be my guess as to why it, it's easy to fizzle away when you don't need to do it when you're trying to do your day job. So maybe with council direction, something we want to do. Councilor, if I remember correct. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Hey, if, go ahead. If, if I remember correctly, it uh, came about as there was competitions between different departments 
and that was, I believe, the contribution from the operations department. So it was kind of a one off for Canada 150. Has everyone done weighing in on that? Well, I just my comment has nothing to do with that, but um, I, I do actually love it though. If there is a way we could bring it back, I think it's great. It's a nice addition to downtown, especially when we have our downtown events like Riverboat Days could be a nice thing to see, but I'll leave it at that. Uh, my question for you was um, just on your one update year here, you had mentioned intersection studies have been completed. A report will be presented to council today. Yeah, it was, it was initially going to be brought back to council today, but uh, Kush was unable to meet that deadline. Okay, so it'll it. be back tomorrow. So it'll come back with the, uh, or not tomorrow. Next, Next meeting. Week. Okay. Next. And this is the study we had a couple months ago of like the speedy area, like the. Correct. The okay. three intersections that were identified. It's going to be, um, he'll, he'll explain the results and, you know, potentially some recommendations, but the end result will likely be a deferral to capital budget for deliberation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I know we've uh, you've uh, been successful recruiting a, a number of people to the organization. I know you're doing a lot of interviews lately. I just want to know what are some of the strengths and weaknesses that you're hearing from maybe some of the staff on Slave Lake? Uh, what are some of the barriers of, of yeah, what we're having yeah. and why we're having yeah. difficulty? Yeah. Well, I think you have probably, you can probably sum them up into two categories. Uh, one is the remoteness of the community potentially, right? So, you know, attracting someone, um, sometimes a young professional to come, you know, when they have an option for a similar job in a, in a bigger location or a bigger center that might be offers of more of a social life or more of a, uh, an outside work sort of atmosphere sometimes goes against us. Um, although you never know, everybody has their own sort of wishes and, and where they're comfortable. Um, but typically that's one, one issue. Two, uh, our compensation levels aren't necessarily competitive to some of those bigger centers that have a bigger budget base, right? So sometimes it just comes down to a, cent, uh, a dollars and cents sort of thing. And we have difficulty sometimes recruiting experienced professionals that have the equivalent opportunity in a, municip in a larger municipality that could potentially make 10 to 15 to 20% more than what uh, our current sort of wage grid offers. I'd like to make a motion that uh, administration look into putting the flags or some sort of Canada Day idea uh, on Main Street as far as putting the paint on the pavement again. With no budget impact? <laughs> I mean, just to be clear, are we are we making a budget, no budget change or apparently this you have a large surplus? So I just want to. All right, then fine, bring it back on budget. I'm good with that too. But let's get it on the books. They ordered in the court. I don't know what the council equivalent of that is. Um, but now, my my thing here is really we have stuff. the paint, we have the stencils, we have the manpower. The impact is what? So the only thing is we won't be able to bring a report back before Canada Day um, because we don't actually. Oh no, actually, well, unless we get it for next Tuesday. Sorry, there is one. I don't need a report. No, whatever you want. No report needed. So that okay. So next year. If it is doable, I'd like to see that. Can, can we friendly amend the motion saying that if it is doable with a minimal uh, impact that administration goes ahead and if it is not possible, then we bring it back as a report at budget time. Is, is that more Sounds clear? Good. Uh, and where are we gonna fund it from? Future expenditure reserve? Funded from future expenditure reserve. Yeah. Funded from the uh, lack of higher than city operations right now since we have an empty spot. So it's in there is room in the future expenditures reserve, especially for something of minimal impact. Does that seem like a reasonable? Yep. Okay. So there, there's a motion. <laughs> I haven't been this caught off guard in the council meeting yet. Uh, there's a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? Okay. Can I call the question those in favor? And that is carried. That was highly entertaining. Um, <laughs> And you need a motion for the CAO update. It's I okay, Councilor Hughes. Thank you. Motion to accept the CAO update as presented. Any further discussion? Call to question those in favor. And that is carried. So we have the management task list up next. 
Yeah. So this again is just an update that there's not any substantial, a lot of the items that are still on here are still waiting for something. Again, it's open for uh, any questions that you may have. Councilor Ferguson. I'll make a motion to accept the management task list as information. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? Okay, call to question those in favor. And that is carried. I'd like to make another motion. Councilor Adams. Can we fix the Excel spreadsheet so that it's sortable by date? Because the dates don't align. I can't, we can't see what's due when. It's all just mixed up. Want the the fact it's shortened is great, so it's easy to scroll through, but I'd make it so it's sortable. Yep, we Please. can make that. You don't have to make a motion. We can make that change. Okay. Sometimes it's just a matter of formatting. So sometimes it's listed That's all as it a is, date. is formatting. Yeah. Sometimes it's listed as a as a word. As a word. Noted. She's writing it down. No. We can we can absorb that cost. We're gonna just continue on then. Um anything for question period? <laughs> I think most of that was covered in the CIA update. So we're gonna move into the committee minutes. Uh, up first is intermunicipal, intermunicipal committee. Um, I guess that would be me. We met last week um, with the MD um, and basically we went over a few items. The first item had to do with regards to the visitor information center and just clar clarifying our memorandum of understanding and our agreement with regards to that operations. Um, and the staffing levels that would be present for the summer. And then we also um, went over an agreement regarding our peace officers. So both the MD and the Town of Slave Lake maintain uh, peace officers um, separate to their Army's municipality. So this memorandum of understanding basically indicated that should a peace officer from the MD or the town vice versa ex um, need assistance, that they can request that the other municipalities peace officers assist them um, so it's basically an on request basis saying that um, the peace officer jurisdiction just doesn't end at the municipality's borders um, but that it does need to be on request so basically it would be more likely in times of emergency um, then there was also some discussion regarding advocacy for Highway 88. As we can see, the signs are up for Highway 88 um, that came up during the election regarding that there's going to be investment into that, which our council and MD council have been um, advoc advocating continuously for. Um, the commentary there was that we would like our administration to approach the province. So for some preliminary discussions um, so that we have input as communities on what areas on Highway 88 need improvement, um, especially with regards to where paving ends and paving starts. Um, on Highway 2, there were some, um, when that was done, some of the better areas were paved versus areas that, that were kind of missed. So we were just hoping to get some community input. Did I miss something? No, never, not overly, um, but not only on parts that get paved, but you've been advocating for Highway 88 to be paid for 10, 15 years, and we're finally getting our turn. That being said, the people that live in that region and the surrounding First Nations and the people of Slave Lake know it needs more than pay, but it, it, it needs some shoulders. passing zones, some shoulders and some widening. So we're speaking with our current MLA or MLA elect and our, our MD that neighbors us and some of the First Nations that we meet with on ANSA. And we, want, we don't want them to just jump the gun and, and pave Highway 88 and then look at it again in 20 years. We want them to do it right, widen the shoulders, pave it properly, get us some passing lanes. So not to say we don't want the paving, but we want to make sure they do it properly and then don't ignore us for the next 20 years. We, we got to do it right the first time. So hopefully we get in front of Minister Dreeshin and plead our case before they just pave Highway 88 and we're stuck with a paved crappy highway. And that was part of the um, discussion regarding intermunicipal is that we should be advocating together on some of these joint regional issues. Um, and especially when looking at some of the paving that happened on Highway 2 um, that didn't necessarily meet all of the community's wishes or expectations. So we're hoping before such a large investment goes into our region that there will be um, some consultation with the surrounding municipalities. And then we'll move on, Slave Lake District Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. 
June, June 21st, next September. And we also discussed the upcoming virtual uh, day week of events. We will present the day of the morning. Um, along with uh, the program of the town, the year garden, and the Saturday. Friday. Sorry, Ali. On Friday. <laughs> and uh, some of the yeah, I'll just jump in there on the um, Riverboat Days weekend. So we've gone back and forth a little bit between All In and Riverboat Days, especially after the COVID years. So with regards to this year, we're going to have, uh, there is no All In weekend. Um, we are going to have the Slave Lake and Region Tourism is going to have their Beach Fest on August 13th got that day right and then we will have um, bringing back riverboat days to kickstart the summer so as Allie mentioned there is the free concert with Ford Bamford in the MRC parking lot on the Wednesday and then starting off with the carnival your Friday is going to look a little bit different in that we have a parade and then basically it's going to be dinner and drinks downtown so there will be the beer gardens as well as some food trucks um on um and there won't be any um it's a little bit of a change there won't be vendors there that evening the vendors are actually going to be moving on to um the farmer's market type all seasons market on saturday so the market basically is moving to more of a day event and then that will also be supported by the downtown retail businesses that will be open so basically it's a bit of change that we're trying to communicate out right now joe <laughs> and there and and there was a, a fireworks conversation there too uh alberta north central alliance so alberta north central alliance it was actually great that we met um in the last couple of weeks here um the meeting was actually held in drift drift piles new enterprises building which was great so that is with um our seven or nine different communities I think it's eight different communities go somewhere in the middle. Uh, basically, there was a discussion regarding selecting a vendor for a website so that um, the mission and vision of Alberta North Central Alliance can be communicated. And then we had some discussion again on advocacy issues. Um, some of them had to do with regards to Highway 88, as well as other highways in the province, because there's the corridor being opened up um, to Fort McMurray. Mm -hmm. Okay, Slave Lake Regional Tourism Society. Okay, uh, so in the Tourism Society world, uh, we have just been busy this last month uh, finishing up distributing our newly updated visitor information guides for the season. We've given those out to lots of the local campgrounds in the area, um, some businesses as well, and we've also distributed out our top 10 things to do in the region brochures. Um, we also have copies of these that will be out at the VIC this summer as well, and we have distributed them out to other VICs throughout the province. Uh, we have unfortunately had to cancel our annual familiarization tours for the month of June. They were supposed to be held um, just this last weekend, basically just due to low registration numbers as well. Um, the timing of that may just have not hit right this year. And with the other fire concerns and things going on, it just happened to be a miss. So we will revisit uh, that event in the future. Uh, another cancellation we also have, unfortunately, are our Canada Day events that we were going to be hosting with the Slave Lake Airport. Um, the airport is simply too active at this time with protecting our surrounding community, and that is obviously their top priority. Um, the airport plays a huge role in that, so we do not want to impede any operations there with bringing in 40 private planes and essentially overloading our airport. Um, so we felt it was best to unfortunately cancel at this point in time. Uh, we would like to work with this group in the future, though, and we'll discuss some other um, potential collaborations that we can do for an event at the airport. Um, so as of now, the Town of Slave Lake will be holding their annual Canada Day event, um, I believe in Sherter Park. So there'll be details released from that from the town. Uh, and one other thing we're working on right now is our Beach Fest event to be held out in Devonshire Beach on August 12th and 13th. Um, things are well underway for planning for this. Uh, we're still looking for a few different community groups who might be interested in participating and hosting things like beach volleyball, et cetera. Um, please reach out to us if you might be interested in joining in any of the events. Um, we have had some great community um, groups step up to help volunteer. We've had some great businesses um, submit some donations to assist with our event as well, and that's much 
appreciated. Um, right now, we are looking like it's a beer garden, sandcastle competition, um, you know, paddle around Dog Island. There's going to be kind of endless activities, things for the whole family to enjoy on both days. And then we will actually have fireworks out at the beach as well, um, just for something kind of new and different. So stay tuned and check our uh, Slave Lake Region uh, Facebook page as well for updates on the event. We have a question. Oh, question. Sorry. Um, did you guys have to cancel that last year too, or was the year before the familiarization tours? Uh, no, it was actually the year before. Yeah. Last year's tours went really well uh, because we had a lot of businesses that did like a large group. Yeah. Um, so that went well. And we we tried to kind of target that again this year, but it just yes. seemed like it just wasn't quite catching on. So it may have actually perhaps be our timing as well. And I think just essentially the fact that a lot of management can't allow such a large amount of staff to take off at the same time period in the day. So we may have to revisit how we're structuring this, the tour. That's a really good thing for the business owners and for the Agreed. community to get everyone into it. So it yeah. to hear that it was canceled. I don't think it's something we want to give up. I think we just have to look at it more closely and maybe restructure the way that we're doing it or revisit, um, you know, how we're offering it out to businesses, et cetera. So something to be learned there. And we'll have a discussion as a board this week about how we can possibly uh, do it better in the future. But I'm open to any suggestions, of course. Okay, thank you. Library. Uh, in the process of reviewing applications for the library scholarship, uh, we've received 10 applications this year, which is fantastic. Uh, in the process of narrowing down that selection to two, the 2022 financials were presented by the accountant and the 2024 to 2028 plan of service surveys are also being conducted. Uh, library management, uh, or sorry, library manager performance review committee has been created and will be mo moving forward with the review process. Hold it. Almost us. Uh, so it's largely business as usual. Uh, the province did approach us in May looking for us to extend shelter programming over the summer. However, we um, had to decline due to not having a location. And currently we are looking at locations for the next winter season. That's the update. CRC. Um, I want to send a shout out to the CAO and his staff. Uh, at the, C at the CRC for offering the office kitchen to help evacuees during the evacuations. The staff also worked to help get donations of toys and games for the, some of the families. Uh, the, the CRC recently did an online auction and raised approximately $8,000 that would help with some of the costs that go outside of the designated funding requirements. And the next meeting will be the AGM, uh, which will be on June 19th. MPC. Uh, we approved a home-based jewelry business and 12 cabins at Big Fish Bay. Okay. Do we need a motion for the... Okay, that would be... I will make the Thank motion <laughs> to accept the committee updates as information. There's a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? We'll call to question those in favor. And that is carried. State of blank. Councillors, do we have any updates? Um, uh, I want to, I'd like to maybe talk about something that we were thinking about today at our Chamber of Commerce meeting is, uh, maybe perhaps, I don't know if this falls under State of the Lake, but it could, I guess, uh, now. <laughs> Jason's in the room. Um, but, uh, maybe, uh, talking about maybe getting some professional photos or videos done throughout the year. Uh, maybe to, I mean, we've got a lot going on in the summer between the beach bash, Riverboat days, um, you know, th these would be good times to get some really great recordings and video that we can put on um, for marketing. Material. For marketing, yeah, and then uh, do that in the winter as well. So maybe come up with two different ones: one for the summer and one for the winter. Professor Hughes, um, just to interject, that's actually something that's kind of on our. Um strap plan, if you will, I suppose, um, to acquire a great database of photos from the Tourism Society's perspective as well. They might not be all event geared, but we do want to have like a seasonal kind of collection of different photos that we want to change our website with and kind of those types of updates. Um, I do know we have some decent photos that have been done and some video content as well that we've kind of kind of worked on using. So I'd maybe let Jason weigh in, but we're we're working on that as a society as well. So yeah, so so internally, we actually have an internal town of slave like employee that operates a drone um unfortunately with the smoke smoky skies i mean he's he's been on a couple times but we haven't been able to get 
um, too many decent shots because of the smoke. Um, as it relates to the video, um, I did propose a budget allocation for a videographer in my budget, and that was ultimately rejected. Um, so we don't have a budget for videographer this year. To that budget. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do have budget for for pictures. So we're focusing on drone photography right now and still photos. But the but yeah, unfortunately, there's no budget allocated for video right now. Okay, Councillor Adams. Motion going to closed. Okay. Uh, oh, did you have a? I was just going to say two things, and then I will entertain that motion. Um, <laughs> too much of a pause. Sorry about that. Um, just for State of the Lake, I just wanted to mention that it has been a busy week of meetings now that the fires have basically subsided currently in our region um, to the point that there's no emergencies. We've we've had quite a few meetings regarding all of our committees as well. We had a um, tri-council networking event um, last week where we got together with the Sarage and the MD um, just so that our, our councils could all meet and basically get to know one another now that we've had some new elections so that was really positive i also wanted to just mention that um, there is the alberta taekwondo club open this saturday at mrc arena 2 and it is open to the public and that will be starting at 11 a.m and now that there is a motion on the floor is there any further discussion okay call to question those in favor and that is carried
Okay, so we had a motion to come out of closed session. And I would like to make a motion that we task administration to peek into the box to explore some opportunities uh, for development at Sunset Place. Okay, any further discussion? Call the question those in favor. And that is carried. Councillor Adams. Motion to adjourn. Any further discussion? <laughs>